The OECD spends a great deal of time monitoring and mentoring governments on their ability to deliver growth. But growth isn't an end in itself. It's a means to securing human progress. Human progress, as we've come to think of it, is built on our ability to leverage natural resources like energy, water and minerals. Now, economists like to think about that pursuit of progress in terms of making use of different stocks of assets or capital. There's natural environmental capital, physical man-made capital, and social or human capital. The global civilization we've built has involved the massive transformation of natural assets into physical and human capital. And the results in barely 200 years have been little short of incredible. But there's a growing concern that these assets aren't entirely substitutable. That if we run the natural asset base down too far, we'll start to undermine our ability to maintain, let alone improve, our physical and social capital. Where the limits might lie isn't clear. We think we have a pretty good idea about the extent to which the oceans and the atmosphere can go on absorbing human greenhouse gas emissions from burning fossil fuels and changing land use without danger. We have no clear idea about the extent to which we can allow the planet's biodiversity to shrink without costly feedbacks. What we do know is that we have to use resources more efficiently. In other words, we have to decouple our attempts to grow our economies from the ongoing rundown of our natural capital. The scale of that challenge can be neatly illustrated using the climate change example. We need a steep decline in emissions by 2050. And we actually need to head towards zero after that. Now there's a measurable economic cost to that decoupling. It implies a level of recorded GDP 4% lower in 2050 than it would otherwise have been. We're still much richer, but not quite so rich. But the flip side is that we're seeking to head off costs of an action that could be much, much larger. The green growth agenda is all about identifying the policy tools, like taxes and tradable quotas, that will catalyze the decoupling that's needed to ensure that the pursuit of progress today doesn't lead to impoverishment tomorrow.